I wasn't planning on making a review on VidCon, but then while I was there, a bunch of people were like, are you making a video review for this? And I'm a people pleaser. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Swell Entertainment, and today we are talking about VidCon 2022. The reason I wasn't planning on doing a video review of VidCon this year is because I did one in 2019, and I had a creator badge then as well, and I was like, the experience isn't gonna be that much different. The only difference now is that I'm a more established creator, there's a chance I'm gonna be able to meet more people, and I really just wanted to be able to meet people and enjoy the convention without worrying about getting B-roll and footage and all this other stuff. And then while I was there, like even day one, they're like, are you doing a review? And it wasn't just like uh, viewers, it wasn't just you guys, it was like other content creators that are like, oh my God, are you doing a video? And I, what was I gonna say, no? Let's get into it. Obviously this is the first event in two years. I was gonna go in 2020, I was gonna go in 2021, and then we kept having COVID and then COVID surges, so it got pushed off to this year. And even then this year, there were different things that were done this year that I know were done because they weren't sure if they were actually gonna be able to have the event. And we'll talk about those in a second. But the reason I got a creator badge and not something else is one, they were never gonna have me be a featured creator. That was never a possibility of a thing that was going to happen. I was never gonna be a speaker, none of that. I was kind of hoping that maybe my management could get me a, you know, an invited guest pass or a full access badge, something. I have no idea if it's because TikTok was the main sponsor this year or not. And so because I am a YouTuber, but I'm not a massive YouTuber, because I do want to make it clear, there were YouTubers that did get full access and invited guest passes. But as far as I could tell, they all had a million or more subscribers, or they were also big on TikTok specifically. It was mostly a TikTok event, but there was plenty of YouTubers and pretty much everyone that was there, I think also, like they had a large following on TikTok, but they were also YouTubers or whatever. The last two months, I've been trying to see whether or not I could get a pass or not. And then a month ago, I just went and bought one of these things because I was like, I want to go. I'm going to go regardless. But about a week before the event, I got an email telling me that I was on a list for something at the Hyatt from Amazon. Why? I have no idea. Really, I don't know. But I got an email telling me that I was on uh, their list for this uh, brand space for Amazon influencers. The Hyatt is where all the featured creators and most of the invited guest pass people were staying two, three blocks away from the convention center. There as well were all of the creator lounges and like some brand activations in there. I was invited to the Amazon Live one. Why? Again, your guess is as good as mine. I didn't even meet the person who put me on the list. I mean, thank you. Thanks for including me. I'm very confused why me of all people, but I'm not mad about it. So anyway, that's how I got the red high at wristband. Wednesday is the technically the registration day with outdoor events and things like that, but the expo hall and I believe the creator lounges and all of that, none of that is open on Wednesday of the event. In 2019, for the creator badges, if you ordered them early enough, they actually would mail your wristband and your badge to you. And so you got to skip the registration line process. My guess again is that because of COVID, they weren't sure if they were going to be able to actually have the event when they had it. And so that's why they didn't mail these out because they wanted the ability to refund or cancel the event without going through the cost of having to mail out badges and everything. Real talk, you guys need better signs of this event. My God, trying to find registration is like pulling teeth. It was like an hour and a half for registration. It was indoors, thankfully. However, for how spread out the overall event was with where they were doing registration, I don't get why they didn't spread out the stands, the booths for the check-ins. Obviously there is still a pandemic going on. And so VidCon required that to go actually into the event, you had to show your vaccination status with two weeks prior from your last dose or have had a negative COVID test within two days of the first day of VidCon. I'm vaxxed, so I got my green check band, you know, vaccinated or not, spreading out those check-in booths so that we're not all clumped together the way that we were, I think would have been ideal. And they had the space to do it. It's not like, oh, we don't have a space. Half the room was empty. Walked around for a little bit, met a couple people in line, which was very nice. It was super hot the entire week. It was miserable. I barely went to the outside area, barely. But my dad and I, as we were walking out, we went by the Mr. Booth YouTube Shorts thing. I actually never got the chance to do the YouTube Shorts drive-through thing, so I never got a chance to try any of the snacks, but there was no line for the uh, Mr. Beast thing. It was the giant gumball machine where you got to take a coin, put it in the slot, turn it, and then you would get a gumball beast bar or whatever, and then a prize. My dad got stickers. I got, oh yeah, I have a pile of swag just off camera. We're gonna talk about that in a second. I got 
A Mr. Beast sweatshirt. Yay. It's the Beast, Mr. Beast logo with VidCon. And then the back, it says Mr. Beast YouTube shorts. And back home, my dad had to go to an angel game that night and I was going to go to the lounge because it opened at five. So I went home, hung out with Hermes for a bit and then went to the lounge. Checked in, no problem. Literally walked up and was like, hi, I was told I'm on this list outside the Hyatt. They gave me the Hyatt one and then they gave me the yellow one and said, uh, so that people know you're like with us or something. I, I, I'm assuming it was so people inside the Amazon Live booth knew that I was one of their invited people. But th as far as I can tell, other than that first night where two people came up and talked to me that worked at Amazon, this did nothing inside the booth. And again, I just walked in with this badge. It was very clear I was not a featured creator. I had the purple wristband. Uh, the featured creator was yellow, I believe, for featured creators. So I was just gonna go to the Amazon Live one. It was kind of like in the middle of things. Uh, talked to some people in there, did a claw machine, didn't win anything. And then I was gonna leave. Like, okay, I'll like go walk around, you know, to see if I recognize anyone or see if I know people. Because I do have some mutuals that are YouTubers and. TikTokers and things like that. But I learned from the Creator Clash event that it doesn't matter if we're mutuals or not. It doesn't matter how we talk on social media. I don't have the ability, the capability of walking up and being like, hi, I know you from Twitter. What's up? We follow each other on Twitter. How are you having a good time? I'm Amanda. I can't do that. Why? I don't know. I just can't. I would love to be able to blame the pandemic, but I'm fairly certain I just could never do that. And I was just never in a situation where I had to be able to do that, you know? But as I was walking out of the Amazon Live Creator Lounge, I saw the Prime Video Creator Lounge and I was like, okay, both are Amazon. So I was like, hi. I wasn't sure, I wanted to ask, is it okay if I come in this one if I have the Amazon uh, wristband? And they were like, oh, the Amazon one? Yeah, that's fine. Let me just put your name on the list. From then on, I just kept being like, is it cool if I come in? And they were like, yeah, sure, come on in. For like pretty much every single uh, lounge, they let me come in. There were certain places where it was like, oh, hey, these are only for featured creators, uh, but you're welcome in here, you know, that type of thing. So like certain giveaways and grab bags and things like that, they weren't gonna give to me or wouldn't let me have, which is fine. But you know, I don't know. I got a lot out of just basically walking up and being like, hi, is it okay if I come in? <laughs> Thursday was the official start of the event. I went there first thing in the morning because I wanted to one, see the expo hall before it got too busy. I could just walk right in. I had no issues, super hot. I didn't even, again, the outside area, I'm sure it was fun. I saw a little bit of it the first day. I never went back over there just in the direct sunlight. No. Everyone's like, it's not that hot. No, for this time of year for SoCal, it's pretty freaking hot. It wasn't fun. So I went to the expo hall, walked around a lot, talked to as many people as I could. A lot of booths that I recognized from past VidCons. One of the editors handed me this. There was one booth that I wanted to go to the entire time. And the line was always like two hours long. And then when I finally had the time to sit there and get in line, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna read on Kindle Unlimited on my phone and I'm gonna do it. The line was closed. They wouldn't let me do it. They were like, it'll maybe open up for like 30 seconds in like three hours. And there were already people and kids lined up for the booth. It was the Squishmallow Human Claw Machine. Do you know how great it would have been for me to close the circle of my Squishmallow is cold video uh, by me literally strapped into a crane, dangling over just a pool of Squishmallows and then recreating the Toy Story claw machine clip would have been amazing. But no, the universe said, no, you don't get to feel joy. I'll probably get over it, probably. I felt like the overall event itself of VidCon was much more spread out this year, as in physically spread out. Like the booths were more spread out, the stages were more spread out, the second floor they had more of the individual talk spaces, which I believe they had in 2019 as well. The third floor, instead of being the creator floor, like in 2019, it was industry only and it was industry talks. And then they moved the creator and industry space with the creator lounge to the ACC North building, I believe, which is the second floor of where they did the registration room this year. I do think that was good and bad, for the creator space alone, I think it was good because one, way less foot traffic at the event, it's that area itself. Um, it wasn't as easy for people to go up and down. It was kind of like, okay, I wanna go to this space versus just kind of camping out there looking for content creators. So I think it worked out because it was never as crowded as it has been previous year. I think it was good also to have the uh, talks in that space as well. I thought that worked out well. The creator lounge this year, much better. Every creator that I spoke to said that it was a much better creator lounge this year. I 
believe they were sponsored by mpbvideo.com. I have their thing somewhere. I have a card from them somewhere, but I believe they were sponsoring everything. They had coffee, water, tea, fruit, things like that. Lots of seating. It was nice. It was more open air. They had scanned us in and checked us in. Everyone told me in 2019, like, oh yeah, no, the creator lounge is usually sponsored by someone. There's no sponsor this year, but this year, since it was sponsored, it was just a much better area, I think. And it worked out really well this year. This event was much more sparsely attended than I was expecting. Flocked as I was there, like, wow, this expo hall, like there's lines for everything, but like there doesn't seem to be a ton of people here. Same with the creator area itself. It just overall felt emptier. And I was like, okay, maybe it's just not as cramped. And that's why I feel like it's emptier. And then to record this video, I went back and watched my 2019 review. And no, uh, the crowds in that video are crazy. There's a ton of people in there. Even on Friday and Saturday, which are both one day ticket options for community, where it was way more people, the people that were there, I would argue were mostly parents and children. The expo itself was much more of a, a younger crowd overall. Okay, I've talked about this before. There is no barrier to entry for a creator pass. You don't have to put in your follower account. Nothing's getting verified. There was no chance of me being denied the chance to buy a creator pass. If I had probably, I think it was what, 170 when I bought this, 200 bucks. I When I bought it, I don't know. It was, if I had that money, I could buy this pass. The case with that is that you have a lot of people who are very interested in making content and making content cre uh, creation like their full-time thing. So they have smaller followings. And then because of this year with YouTube not being the main sponsor, there was also a lot of content creators that I was surprised did not have invited guest badges who are way larger than me or invited guests or full access or feature creator badges who are way bigger than me, who either bought this or didn't even see the value in getting this because it wasn't worth it to them to even go to the event if they weren't gonna be getting the access of the full access badges or the security elements of being a feature creator or full access and all of that. And that's something that I do think is important as well. Like, sure, getting into certain areas, great. Perfect, fun, but also for larger creators, there is a safety aspect of it that has been an issue at other VidCons. And so there were just so many people who were like, yeah, I, I, it wasn't worth it for me to go to the convention itself. So they were at the Hyatt, but they were not at the convention. I really don't consider myself a big deal. I, I really don't. I just think that I'm like this content creator who spends all my time in my apartment with my dog. And then I go to these events and I meet people and these people who I've been watching for years are like, oh my gosh, Amanda, hey, I love your videos. And then, okay, if you if you said that to me or you said you like my videos or you say you watch my stuff or I make good videos, whatever. If you were a content creator and you said that to me, I'm sorry that you probably saw me make this face. What? Cool, thank you. I'm sorry you saw the physical manifestation of me being taken aback. My apologies. I'm sure that was very odd for you because <laughs> the whole thing was weird for me. Like, until things like that happen, I really don't, I just like, there's this thing called face blindness with social media. I'm sure everyone experiences this, which like events like these are great because it's like, okay, cool. I can put some na faces to the na names and faces to the numbers and my analytics and all of that. And it really kind of helps make this feel more real and not like I'm literally talking to a camera right now. You know, like this is a little insane when you think about it. And so the fact that there's potentially like even a hundred thousand of you sitting at home watching this or at your job or maybe listening to it like a podcast while you're driving in your car to work, please don't crash your car. That'd be really embarrassing if this was playing while you, the ambulance came in. It's very hard for me to picture like that number manifested. This is still like this weird little fun hobby thing that's now just my job. I've been to a lot of conventions, been to a lot of expos, been to a lot of events. Another event I recently went to a few weeks ago was the Credo Beauty Summit, the Clean Beauty Summit in downtown LA. And everyone I spoke to there, like that was working a booth, was so excited to talk with people, was so willing to answer questions. Everyone was in such a good mood. It was a very great experience. It was very surprising to me how just like vaguely condescending a lot of these brands were. Like I'm asking questions. I'm trying to figure out like, what what's your deal? This one brand that I use a lot had a booth there. I love their products. And this guy was so condescending to me. <laughs> I was, it's like, I get it. You don't know me from Adam, that's fine. But at the same time, I'm a potential customer and you have the opportunity to get me excited about your product. Like what? What if I was 16 trying to make it on YouTube or something and you're out here being like, so do you know what color grading is? Like, I'm sorry, 
sorry, to that dude in particular, fuck you, <laughs> genuinely. I'm fine, I'm familiar with the product. Like there were people at that booth that were super sweet. Like there was someone running a camera that was like, do you wanna put glitter in your face for this photo? Like super sweet. And then this one guy who was literally there to help, they had like a touch and try table. And this one dude was just kind of being an asshole about it. You guys are gonna figure out exactly what booth I'm talking about. I'm not being subtle. <laughs> I hope it was just me. I hope you weren't doing that to every other person that came up and was asking you questions about the specs of the things you were selling. Like, come on. Like a lot of people were really great and they were very excited to answer questions. T3 NFT or something or NFTs, I don't know. But like the first person I talked to was like, she was excited. But like, she couldn't really answer my questions. And I went back a few days later and was like, okay, sorry, so who owns the NFT? And it's like, oh, we can help you set up your wallet. And then once you are scanned, you get a VidCon NFT just by signing up uh, with us and doing the photo thing. And then you would own your own NFT if you wanna keep it for yourself or you wanna sell it like it's you. Personally, I don't wanna go through the stress of having a little me running around in the metaverse. I would be worried that I have to feed her like a Tamagotchi. Do I have to find her housing? There's already a housing market here that's issues. Like what about in the metaverse? I don't wanna contribute to that problem. At least those people were answering my questions and talking with me and had the good vibe. I went to some of the panels that were in the uh, creator space. Uh, some of them were good. Some of them I'm just, again, I've talked about this before. Some of them I get something out of, some of them I don't. A lot of the brands that were in the uh, creator space were great. I did another uh, vidIQ uh, channel audit for my podcast channel, which uh, got some new tips for that one. I'm terrible at promoting my podcast. If you want to check out my podcast, it's Swell Shenanigan, available for listening wherever you can find podcasts. But if you would instead like to look at my face every time I do a Swell Shenanigans episode, you can go to the Swell Shenanigans YouTube channel. New episodes every Wednesday. So overall, the convention itself this year, I don't want to say it was bad because I, I do enjoy going to conventions, whether I it's an expo hall or not. Like I enjoy walking around to conventions. I enjoy talking to brands. I do like a convention setting, but it just, yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in the expo hall this year. That was partially because I got way more at the Hyatt with the current state that I was in for my content and all of that, both at the various uh, creator lounges. I'm fairly certain I went to every single one. There was one from Collab. There was one from, again, Amazon Live, Amazon Prime. Um, there was one from Koji where they had a little spa set up. They gave me a hand massage. That was very nice. They had champagne and stuff. I didn't drink any, but it was very nice. Meta, Meta had a beautiful lounge. Oh my God. And I have some B-roll from these events, but overall at the Hyatt, there was signs posted everywhere that was basically asking that you be respectful of people who are featured creators in this space. Cause again, they are staying at the hotel. Don't ask for selfie or video requests or autograph requests. Limiting your fangirling type of thing. And to be respectful of people's uh, privacy. So I didn't vlog or uh, get a ton of B-roll in these spaces. Some of them I did because obviously they're designed in such a way where yeah, they want you to enjoy their brand and talk to them and stuff. But also they, they want you to take photos and clips in that space and things like that. There was the YouTube Clubhouse Creator Lounge space. Uh, they had a lot of stuff in there, great food in there. There was Jelly Smash. There was the TikTok atrium, which was the TikTok room. That one was cool. There was a very interesting dreamy vibe about the whole event itself. There's a Boohoo gifting suite. I went there the Wednesday night and I could have probably gone back in. They did ask that everyone only go once and I listened to that, but everyone else was like, yeah, no, I just kept going. They didn't, they didn't check. Basically it was like a showroom. You could go in, see what you liked and then they would go and get you your sizes. And so everyone got one item. However, if it was like a, a set, like a sweatshirt and shorts or pants, then that counted as one. So this is my pile of stuff, an Amazon shirt. <laughs> I'll talk more about some of this in a second. So yeah, I got this purple sweatshirt set with shorts. It says uh, official studio OFCL. I like it. One of the girls by the door was wearing it. And I was like, I love that purple. The thing about me that you need to know is that I love swag. Not swag as in cool, swag as in stuff. I love swag. We could blame my parents for this. My mom worked in Tile and Stone. My dad worked in Home Improvement. So they would both go to various trade shows and stuff. New York, Vegas, uh, Florida, and all of that when I was growing up. Every time they would come back, they'd be like, okay, present time and my brother and I would sit on the floor and picture eight-year-old me losing her mind because my dad gave me like a West Coast construction mug, like vibrating with, ex with excitement. I love stuff, okay? It's my parents' fault. I will say overall, severe lack of mugs at this event. I expect better next year. I will say 
Prime Video. Spent probably the most time in their lounge. Um, it was just a really good vibe. Like everyone's vibes were good, but like some of them were more cramped than others. Prime Video Lounge uh, was more open, was kind of like a softer lighting, but not like dark. They had a couple of different photo spots. They had a little speakeasy in the back. I'm a sucker for a secret door. I love a good secret door. That was fun. Food and stuff was great in there, uh, but they just had a lot of more couches and they were more spread out. So I didn't feel like I was intruding on a conversation by just sitting down and eating a little sandwich that they had there. So each day in the prime video room, they did merch drops based on different shows. So the first day was the wild. So I got a fanny pack that came with sunglasses in a case, a portable charger, Oh yeah, I got a photo. I said, can you make me look tall? And I just look like I'm holding up a stick and hand sanitizer. Tuesday was invincible. So what they did for that day is you got a tote bag and a hat and you could pick one to be customized. So I got the tote and it's invincible. I did green and purple for the detailing and then I could pick what I wanted it to say so I did swell. And I got to keep the hat too, which was cool. This was Friday. This is for the summer I turned pretty. These apparently ran out immediately. So I'm glad I went there early. Bunch of makeup and stuff. So we got Lemonhead LA, Summer I Turned Pretty bracelet from Local Eclectic, a bunch of rare beauty makeup. They also had a rare beauty stand in there to do touch-ups and talk about products and stuff, which was very nice. And I also got Moroccan treatment hair oil. I love this stuff, so that's nice. Yeah, I was walking around with this and uh, then I went to the Amazon live room again and I won a ring light. So I was like literally walking around carrying these boxes. So I went to the Boohoo room and I was like, can I have a bag? Cause they were the only ones that had a bag big enough. There was also the meta pool area. That's right, I almost forgot about that. The meta pool area was really cool. I kept meaning to go back out there. They had um, croc slides that they were airbrushing and I didn't get a chance to go over there when they were doing airbrushing. So when I left, they were like, hey, we can't do any airbrushes, but we're still giving out slides and you can get some gibbets. So I got these and I got butterflies, a rocket ship that lights up and a bumblebee. There's a few other booths I went into at the event itself, um, at the con itself, like the Monster High booth was cool. They had a bunch of photo spots. I got to do a pop quiz. I am a, a werewolf, according to this pop quiz. So I got a sash. Fuck it up. I have no idea how I'm gonna feel about the movie itself. This is from Jelly Smack. This is from TikTok Atrium. Lots of bucket hats at this event. This is from uh, Light Tricks, one of the rooms in the creator space. My content, my rules, hell yeah. Canon, this is from the Expo Hall. Expo Hall, Prime Video Lounge. Yeah, these meta totes. Every time I got something from meta, they would put them in these totes. I have like three of these at least. I'm gonna have to do something with them. I thought about maybe cutting them up and making a corset top with them. Would I go back as a creator badge? Yes and no. The reality of it is, is that I have to be honest. And though I enjoyed the expo hall, I probably would have done what a lot of my other mutuals and friends did where they went for one day and then didn't go the rest of the days because they saw what they needed to see and were done. Whether they were an invited guest or a creator badge, like I know a lot of people who were more excited to just be in Anaheim or LA area so that they could meet up with their mutual content creators and things like that. And they barely went to the expo hall if they went at all. For myself, I really don't know how much time I spent overall at the expo hall. I, I'm not entirely sure. I do think I spent a majority of the time at the Hyatt, met a bunch of people in person, met a bunch of content creators that I uh, have been watching for years and I got to hear that they like my stuff, which is crazy. I met a, a bunch of creators that were amazing. A lot of them I met at the Hyatt. Um, some of them I didn't. As far as like being a content creator goes and everything like that, I got more out of being at the Hyatt and you know having connections to other content creators and being invited to various parties and things like that. Even for, if I was just to put myself in like the position of the fans, if your goal is just to meet content creators and enjoy VidCon itself, I really think you only need a community badge. The people that I saw that were out and about at the expo, they were in the community spaces, the overall spaces. Everyone I spoke to who at industry said it was not worth it. Pretty much everyone said that, whether they were in the industry or they were a content creator who just thought they should have industry because they couldn't get an invited guest badge or a all access pass. Overall, I had a good time at VidCon. I had a great time at VidCon, but it was the people that really made it great. And I don't think it was the setting. I don't think it was VidCon itself. I don't know if I'm explaining this right at all, but it was like the real world manifestation of my life for the last two and a half years. You know, like I, this all happened during the pandemic for me. Prior to this, like last VidCon, I had 6,000 subscribers and people came up to me then and that was mind blowing to me. But like, even now it's like, I, I can't, 
immensely quantify 275,000 people watching my face. I can't, that doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. And then even the thought that like people watch me, but then also like people whose videos I watch, like they're watching my videos and being like, oh yeah, no, I've been watching you for a while now. Like that's wild to me. <laughs> like it's insane. The extracurricular stuff was fun. Yeah, like I got invited to an Instagram party, the Instagram night out uh, at the at the Anaheim Garden Walk, which is very cool. I did not get the memo about the vibes. I just told I was on, I was RSVP'd and I was on the list. So I showed up literally in my Lisa says God dress <laughs> that I wore to the, can, the event itself. And I look like I'm ready for a parent teacher conference. I said that to one of the photo people, the guys behind me were like, no, no, you, you look good. You look good. The sneakers break it up. Thank you. But like, I felt like I was at a parent teacher conference. <laughs> the glasses don't help. James Charles was there. I'm sure he's in the background of some of those clips. Nano zebra lunch, that was fun. Met a bunch of people at that lunch, that was cool. And then I had to leave because Hermes was destroying my dad's house. I had to go <laughs> do crisis management. I mean, I'll go to VidCon next year. I, I'm gonna go. I had a much better experience meeting you guys out at VidCon than say in the street. I've talked about this before. I have anxiety. <laughs> you guys ever meet me in public, like out in LA or something? Like, I'm sorry if I come across as rude or something. It's just cause I'm caught off guard and I'm panicking. But like VidCon, it was much better because I kind of, there was like almost like the expectation of someone potentially seeing me. Hopefully everyone had like a good experience meeting me. Um, I, you guys were all wonderful, and very sweet. And uh, so I hope you guys also had a good time meeting me. Would recommend VidCon for uh, creators who are really trying to grow and really starting out and really want to make connections. But I would really focus on that. Focus on making connections with other creators, not necessarily larger than you, but other creators in the same boat as you. So much of this work is very isolating and uh, is done alone. Like I, I work from home in my apartment, even though I do event reviews and I go do stuff, a lot of this is done by myself in my apartment with Hermes supervising while he tries to eat my mic cords. That's really it. And so meeting people and kind of growing a community from events like this, I do think is really great. Meeting people who are in a similar size boat as you, I think is great so you can help build each other up. I'm not saying to climb. I'm not saying to demand that like a content creator like works with you or does a collab. Be respectful and all of that. I really think there's something great about community. And I think that not like a community badge, but like community in general. And so, you know, meeting people and uh, making genuine connections with people who are trying to do the same thing you are doing, which is, you know, be a content creator, whether you're a YouTuber or a TikTok or an Instagram or whatever, you know, I just think it's great to meet people who are also like-minded and creative and you know want to learn and grow and you know hype each other up I always think that's great VidCon is a good place to do that there is looking like there may have been an outbreak of COVID I've tested negative twice I'm still self-isolating for a few more days just to be safe I don't have any symptoms I feel fine I think that's really it see you next year reminder I have a podcast the Swell Shenanigans podcast new episodes every Wednesday except for when I'm at VidCon I have merch like that mug back there shout out to my patrons thank you so much for supporting my Patreon if you also like supporting my Patreon that's what's down below if you like to follow me on social media that'll be all up here and that's gonna be it have a lovely day goodbye I know this video was all over the place, but in my defense, I was not originally planning on making it. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash PC, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Beckles, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Ray, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme, Lord, Michael, Michael, Jane, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry, Zwink.